Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. Today we're going to discuss the trade system, one of the biggest new additions coming to the Wrath of the Druids DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which we got to test in advance thanks to the Assassin's Creed community team and the Mentors Guild. In the video, which we also created in celebration for our 8th anniversary here at Access the Animus, we're going to show you how the trade system works, which are the various steps required to establish your trade network, with a few interesting references to some features from the early Assassin's Creed games, and lastly, we're going to have a look at some of the rewards that you can get by using the system. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it, subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on so you don't miss any of our future updates. And without further ado, let's have a look at the trade system for the Wrath of the Druids DLC of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The trade system is introduced quite early once you reach Ireland through the character of Azar, a merchant coming from the east that is now living in the island. Basically, it works like this. Before establishing a trade network between Dublin and other countries in the world, Eivor will have to find the locations of several trade posts scattered across the map in order to create Ireland's own trade network. Once she finds the location of a trade post which will be usually in ruins and run down by bandits or cultists, she will need to locate the deed needed to own the land where the trade post is located. Oftentimes, the ruins of the trade post will have a clue hinting at where the deed is, Eivor will have to find it and then get back to the trade post to finally claim it. Each post will trade different resources amidst the four that are introduced with the DLC, that is clothing, texts, luxuries and delicacies. Once a trade post is claimed and restored to its standard looks, it will already start producing one of these four resources automatically, and the result of that will end up in a chest next to Azar's stall in Dublin's market. Sounds familiar? It should, as this is pretty similar to most of the villa or renovation systems that have been part of the franchise since Assassin's Creed 2. Once you collect the resources from the chest, you will be able to help Azar establish a trade network with four different countries and people, the Iberians, the Rus, the Egyptians and the Byzantines. This will happen in the form of the deliveries, similar to the hunters and fishermen's ones in Ravensthorpe, but with a tiny bit of story for each of them, which kind of reminds of the Brotherhood contracts and then Mediterranean defense system from the Ezio games, although this time without any bit concerning the Assassins or Templars. Quite immediately you will notice that the normal income from your trade posts isn't enough to satisfy all the deliveries, and that's where the upgrades of the various trade posts come into play. In fact, within each trade post you'll be able to create three buildings, which will help, among other things, to improve the amount of resources produced within them and the storage capacity for the chest containing them next to Azar's stall. In order to create these buildings, you will need an additional resource called Trade Post Supplies, which you can obtain through the obviously guaranteed presence of raids in the DLC. Thus, raiding monasteries and bandits' locations along the rivers will allow you to obtain the supplies needed to create the buildings in your trade posts, which will in turn allow you to obtain and store more clothing, texts, jewelry and delicacies so that you have more to spend in Azar's deliveries. Another way to obtain the trade post supplies needed to create the buildings in the trade posts will be the so-called royal demands and king's pleas. These are introduced further in the story when you meet the High King of Ireland, Flan Shinna, who will basically issue a number of contracts, the Royal Demands, for each region of the map, that will allow you to obtain said resources. 
These contracts can be found in Pigeon Coops in several locations in Ireland, and each of them will contain additional objectives that will provide you with more resources should you be able to complete them. Again, this should sound familiar, as it is basically the Irish version of the assassination contracts from the Ezio games, even with the equivalent of the 100% synchronization. But again, they are completely stripped of the assassin elements, so yeah. Now, if you're a fan of item sets and cosmetics as well, you really want to engage in the raids, the royal demands and the trade post renovations, as by completing Azar's deliveries you will be able to obtain 4 item sets, the Iberian set, the Rus set, the Egyptian set and the Greek Byzantine one, 2 full ship cosmetic sets, 2 tattoo sets and 4 settlement cosmetic items, and even a 5th item set if you really get involved in the system. In fact, completing the deliveries will also improve Dublin's renown, which will be counted in levels from 1 to 5. This, which is similar to improving Ravensthorpe's level, will in turn allow you to obtain pieces of the so-called Dublin Champion set. So all in all, the trade system, which also has a brief narrative arc tied to it, is an optional feature of the game, but a very welcome at that, especially if you are playing on next-gen consoles or PC, because you are going to fast travel a lot, but when you get the hang of it, it will flow easily and as it was with the early Assassin's Creed games, you can just go on with your business and come back to it later to obtain the accumulated resources and subsequently the rewards. And if you need a little more incentive, we're going to show you some pictures and turnarounds of some of those rewards, so you can judge for yourself if you are actually interested in them, in case the trade system itself does not suit your preferences. And that was it for this video, what do you think of the new trade system of the Wrath of the Druids DLC, is it something you might be interested in dabbling in, or would you consider it just a means to obtain the rewards, let us know in the comments below. We also suggest that you keep following us both here and on our social media, as the celebrations for our anniversary will continue for an entire week, so keep an eye out, we might have a few surprises coming your way very soon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.